Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, April 2nd, and my goodness, it is April. Uh, hard to believe. Beautiful day here. Had a lot of rain yesterday, some really bad thunderstorms last night, but the sun is shining. Uh, Going to be in the 50s, which is cooler than yesterday. Yesterday we got close to 70. Anyway, it's April. Fantastic. And it's April 2nd. So, I missed out on all the uh, April 1st festivities yesterday. Sorry I didn't post a video saying I was going to stop smoking pipes or some such, but uh, it's it's all good fun, I know. But uh, yeah, I've just been too busy to even, even think about being an April Fool. So I've got my Tim Thorpe, uh, I believe he called it a canted egg. I always forget. And uh, Haunted Bookshop. And my Larry Blackett baseball tamper because baseball season has started and the Phillies are off to a terrible start. Been beaten up badly by the Rangers two games in a row. Oh well. It's a long season. But I was thinking, uh, I was watching the, the first game uh, on... Thursday, I think. I don't know. It's Thursday or Friday. No, it must have been Thursday. Anyway, I was watching the first game of the season. And I was thinking to myself, you know, I, one of the memories that I will cherish forever is the fact that I got to watch the Phillies play the World Series with my dad when he was in the hospital um, just a, a short time before he passed away last season. And, you know, it was great because we, I've said it many times, you know, we used to go to Phillies games together when I was a little kid. We'd walk to the stadium and, you know, get the $7 or whatever tickets and sit up in the nosebleed seats in Veterans Stadium. But it was just, you know, such an, such, I got so many memories about that. Even just the walk back and forth, you know. And, you know, games on TV, of course, and in more recent years, talking to him about the Phillies on the phone, um, when, when we would chat or, you know, I, occasionally when I'd go to visit, I always would visit in July because uh, he lived up in northern Vermont. And uh, a lot of times there'd be a Phillies game on, we'd, we'd watch for a while. Uh, so it just, the fact that I got to see them in the World Series with him is really special. But the reason I'm talking about this is, it, that was last season, and, and now it's this season, and it just doesn't seem possible that that much time has passed. I mean, it just, time is going so quickly, at least for me. At least for me. I just can't believe it's April. I was, it seems like yesterday I was complaining that it was, you know, Christmas, and I, I hadn't yet realized that October had started. And here it is, April. So, time is moving quickly for me, and I've heard other people say it, you know, I think it's just, there's so much going on. I've been so busy at work, um, and it's bled into the day-to-day, -day, so well, it is the day-to-day, -day, but it, it's, I find myself working very early in the morning, uh, times when I would normally spend just reading, enjoying a pipe, uh, catching up on Instagram or something like that or maybe watching a YouTube video. And then in the evenings, I wind up working, you know, after dinner, uh, just because I've got so much that I have to get done. And it has completely eliminated any shop time. So I've got these uh, cob stems that I've been working on. And you probably remember seeing at least Instagram photos of these. These are the these are the final stem blanks. Everything from here on out is hand work. Uh, but they're drilled, slotted, uh, shaped. This is size to the cob uh, shank. But having the time to actually do the hand work has been, you know, these have been sitting here for maybe two weeks now. So yeah, time is precious these days. Uh, but the other thing is that and this is the thing I really wanted to talk about. A little bit of an awkward segue, I guess, but uh, change is, is happening. There's, things are just changing a lot. And 
We seem to be at a very interesting time, a very interesting place in history. And it's partly technology driven, it's partly politically motivated. We're not going to get into the political side of it, but and and maybe it's just that we have a more connected sense these days because of the technology and you know we're getting information instantly although we don't know the quality of the information which is a big problem i've been thinking about writing a book i always think about writing books i never write them but i have i probably have uh, several thousand titles of books somewhere well, they're in my head. I never wrote them down. But I tell my wife all the time, that's going to be the topic of my next book. And I'll tell her what the title is, and she'll say, yeah, go write it. Uh, I don't write books. Anyway, um, I want to write a book called Living in the Post-Truth World, because we're kind of to the point now where knowing truth is becoming nearly impossible. And that scares me. But that's another video. Uh, but we're getting information so fast. And maybe that's why time seems to be moving so quickly. Because time moves most quickly when your brain is fully occupied. And your, your perception of time. Time doesn't change. Uh, but time is measured in change. Right, so we, we if if you're just sitting in a in a room with nothing, maybe a clock to look at, if, and you're in there for an hour, it's going to feel like an eternity. But if you're in there, you know, for you younger kids playing your favorite video game for an hour, it's not going to seem like an hour. It's going to go very quickly. Or if you're working and you're really engaged in something, you're in that state called flow, where you know you just focused in and in the moment, time is going to fly by. And I think that's the problem. We've got information coming in so quickly and so, so, so constantly that we never get those moments of blank nothingness. And uh, that induces this odd constant state of flow that's not focused in yeah, time flies by. But things are changing. You know, it seems like just last week I became aware of this whole artificial intelligence uh, chat GPT thing. And already I'm seeing things like major scientific journals putting out statements on the use of artificial intelligence in writing scientific papers. Um, there was a recent uh, sort of public letter signed by multiple uh, Silicon Valley type CEOs saying there should be a six month moratorium on the development of artificial intelligence because we don't understand it. You know, and this seems to have happened like overnight. Uh, to get geeky, uh, Wolfram Alpha has just linked up to ChatGPT, which is really scary, but not something I was expecting to happen that quickly. So we're at this, this inflection point where, at least in technology, things are really moving fast. And it, it reminds me of, uh, this is going to show my age, but it reminds me of back when I was in graduate school, there was this big hullabaloo because, you know, there was this, this World Wide Web thing that nobody really knew what it was about. And some somebody at Carnegie Mellon had put a webcam on the coffee pot, the department coffee pot so that you didn't have to leave your desk to go and see if there was a fresh pot of coffee. You could just log on to a website or go to a web URL and see the coffee pot. And people over the country were watching the Carnegie Mellon coffee pot. This was a big deal. And now, you know, nobody would care. Of course you can do that. The idea that you could sell things over the internet was, was you know, yet. Yeah. Grinnell and Deal had a web page and they had prices on it and everything, but there was a phone number. You could shop, just like you could shop with a catalog, but you still had to call them. And that was that was like high-end online shopping at the time. 
Now we got Amazon dropping things off with drones. Change happening really fast. And I'm not arguing against it, you know. Um, I forget what I titled this video, but I think it was something like change is the only constant or the only constant is change. Um, yeah, it's inevitable and that's okay. You know, that's, that's life. We change. We, our bodies change. Our bodies turn over. Our cells turn over with some exceptions. But um, we're not the same person now as we were yesterday. We're not the same person now as we were five minutes ago. Our brain changes based on what we experience. You know, just the fact of sitting here talking is changing my brain. So I'm a different person than when I started talking. The change is, you can't get away from it. You shouldn't want to get away from it. It's, it's a normal part of, of life. But so many things, so many foundations have been shaken. In, in, in recent time that it it makes it hard hard isn't I, I don't want to make this sound emotional it just it makes it difficult to conceptualize the, the world when your foundation is in flux and this goes back to what I was talking about with truth and all that but that's a different part of it I'm just talking about facts that I've known forever that are no longer factual for example Pluto apparently is not a planet. Pluto is a planet. It's round. It goes around the sun. It's a planet. But, you know, most of the scientific community disagrees with that. I don't know why. You know, some technicality. I'm in no way qualified to discuss the planethood of Pluto, but hey, gum it, it's a planet. But no, they tell me it's not. Uh, today, so. I don't know if you know who Johannes Vermeer was. Uh, he's a painter. There's a painting at the beginning of this video, and it'll be at the end, uh, entitled uh, Girl with a Pearl Earring. It's probably his most famous painting. That's why I stuck it in there, because people will recognize it. I really love Vermeer, um, Vermeer's art. He, he has, his paintings have a quality to them that you instantly recognize. When you see a Vermeer, you say, that's a Vermeer. And I think it's because of the way he used light in his paintings. They're, they're just so, I don't know, there's so much unpainted in the Vermeer, and yet it's there because of the way the light works in the paintings. Uh, his subject matter was usually just everyday uh, common people and just doing everyday common things. And yet there's something about those paintings where they're not hyper-realistic. It's not like you're looking at a photograph, but they evoke an emotional response as if you're in that moment. And I, I, I just really have always enjoyed Vermeer's painting. There are, he supposedly, previously was told, he, he only painted about 60 paintings. And of those, only 30 some have survived. And most of them are unsigned. So. There's always controversy, you know, painting will pop up and they'll say, oh, it's a new Vermeer, and then, you know, no, it's not. Um, so Vermeers are rare, uh, and they're special. Well, I saw a story this morning, and who knows if it's true, because we don't know if anything's true. Uh, but apparently they found a large uh, set of Vermeer paintings, 250-some previously unknown paintings by this, this painter. I believe every painting, there might be one or two still lifes, and I think he might have done a self-portrait, uh, but beyond that, everything has was um, common people doing common day tasks. That was his sort of thing. 250-some paintings have been uncovered by Vermeer, of dogs. I don't know if this is true, but if it's true, it means that this man loved to paint dogs. He painted a lot of dogs. <laughs> and yeah, 250. That's, that's 
four times more paintings than we thought he painted. Is that right? Yeah, it's four times more paintings than we thought he painted and eight times more than we had. Wow. And they're all dogs. My guess is that this will be an unsubstantiated story. It's one of these fake AI generated things that Google likes to show me in the morning. I don't know. But despite that, things are changing fast. In the minor change category, it's little things sometimes. Um, I love Spingoolie, Saturday Night Horror, um, usually classic horror, you know, 30s to 50s most of the time. Last night was uh, Abbott and Costello Meet the Mummy. Yeah, you know, fun. You watch it, he does little comedy things during the, the, the movie, uh, little sketches that occur during breaks and stuff. Uh, if, you, if you haven't seen him, he's on MeTV. It's a great, great show, Saturday nights. It comes on at 8 o'clock. I record it and watch it later because I don't want to watch a horror movie at 8 o'clock. So when you go to, on Comcast at least, if I save something on the DVR, when I go to play it, it's got a little icon that lets you know you know what the, what the show is and it's forever been a photograph of Svengooli holding a rubber chicken which you know and, and he's just standing that, that just been like that for as long as I've had Comcast that's what it's been last night I go to play Svengooli and it's changed this cartoon image of him a cartoon Svengooli surrounded by like a cartoon mummy and a cartoon uh, Frankenstein monster and a cartoon uh, vampire Okay, it's fine. It's fine. But why did you have to change it? Because you got to change things. Because it's somebody's job to design those little icons and darn it, he's going to keep his job. I just opened the new bag of Haunted Bookshop on Friday. Different label. Why? I don't care. It doesn't hurt me. You know, it doesn't really affect anything. It's just... What? What is constant anymore? What what do we have to anchor ourselves to? Now, granted, if you're anchoring yourself to Spinguli logos and Hawaiian bookshop labels, you, you, your life is a bit uh, deficient <laughs> in some ways. These are just examples, they're minor examples. Uh, I wonder about kids today, you know, young kids, that six-year-olds, eight-year-olds, the world they're going to grow up in is going to be so different from the world that most of you have grown up in. You're younger than me for the most part. And there's some folks that are, there's a few of you that are older than me and, and a few that are the same age as me. And, and we grew up in a very, very different world than we're living in now. So we kind of know what their experience is going to be like, but it's going to be an order of magnitude different from what we experienced. I don't know. I don't know if I'm if I'm excited for them or if I'm worried for them. Um, I hope the right answer is excited because, you know, the technology that we're seeing emerge right now could be so powerful. But also very dangerous. Especially in a world where it's increasingly difficult to know what is real and what is true. So, I don't want to sound like an old man saying in my day we went, you know, both ways uphill and all that stuff. And I don't want to sound like a Luddite saying we, we shouldn't change. I am a Luddite. I, you know, heck, I use wooden hand planes, for goodness sakes. But it's just because I enjoy them. It's not because I think a power planer is a bad thing. And likewise, I will probably continue to write my very rare blog posts with my fingers on a, on a keyboard rather than asking some chat bot to write it for me because I enjoy the process and I, and I, and I, I don't trust the AI to do it for me.
but yeah, it's uh, that's going to seem like an old archaic process soon. That's going to seem as odd as somebody writing using a manual typewriter, which, you know, I, I think many of the people that are writing professionally right now have never even seen a manual typewriter unless it's been in a movie or something. Change. It might be good, it might be bad, but it's going to happen. Well, I've got a theoretically busy day today. I have to, uh, to do a quick yard cleanup because I often do that on Sundays. It's still too cold to brush the dogs. Yesterday would have been great if it wasn't raining, but hopefully next weekend things will warm up. Next weekend's Easter. Unbelievably. So I might spend some time working on those stems uh, this morning and uh, see how that goes. But i got to take some time off today, too, because work has just been... I worked uh, yesterday until noon just to get some stuff done. And I'm probably going to have to do a little bit of work today. I mean, my day job work. And a you know, full day, Monday, tomorrow. So, yeah, i gotta got to gotta have some downtime. So... That's what I might do today. Next Sunday is Easter, so I will probably uh, have a short video rather than, well, I don't know. We'll see how the day goes, but uh, may not be as, as long and rambly as you're used to. And Friday, next Friday is Good Friday, so I will not have a live stream for that to, to observe uh, passion. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. We'll be back the following Friday with a live stream. I'll be back Sunday with the Easter greeting for you and talking about whatnot. I will finish this pipe, and I will get my, my Sunday started. I hope your Sunday is, is wonderful, and you have a great time. Uh, I hope the week ahead is, is wonderful for you. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Bye now.